Welcome to Modern Management of the Older Adult, brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. We are live on Instagram, we are live on YouTube as well. My name is Dustin Jones and you are listening to the PT on Ice Daily Show brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. Good morning, folks. It's Wednesday. We talk about all things older adults. Today's topic at hand is going to be starting an older adult fitness class. This is hands down the most common question uh, that many of our MMOA faculty uh, will get um, is how do we take our folks from rehab to the fitness setting? And in particular, maybe starting a class, whether you're in the clinic, whether you're in the gym, a very common question that we get. Um, and I'm going to dive into this and break this down, the do's, the don'ts, mainly learning uh, from uh, failures and mistakes. <laughs> so before we get into the goods about starting a, an older adult fitness class, one course that I want to highlight within the MMOA or Modern Management of the Older Adult Division, that is the MMOA Summit. This is MMOA Live. Uh, it is going to be in Lexington, Kentucky, August 12th, 13th. This is a very special course for two main reasons. We're calling it the MMOA Summit because the entire MMOA faculty are going to be in one location teaching this course. We have never done this before. Usually it's a, a two or three of us all over the country uh, trying to, to spread that old not weak message. We're all going to descend into Lexington, Kentucky at Stronger Life to deliver the good. So that's the first thing. It's going to be super fun just to have the whole team together. That doesn't happen very often. We're going to plan this once a year. This is going to be the first one. Second, the big thing is this is going to be the first debut of a big revamp of MMOA Live, uh, where we're really going to um, refresh some of the lectures, but then really step uh, up the labs in a tremendous way, and we're super pumped to be able to bring this to you all. So if you are maybe on the fence of taking MMOA Live, or you want to come hang with the MMOA crew, uh, that's going to be the course to do that. August 12th, 13th uh, this year in Lexington, Kentucky, we'd love to have you all. All right, let's get into the good, shall we? So starting an older adult fitness class. So for context, um, there's there's several MMOA faculty that have you know worked clinically as clinicians, but then also started to dip their toes into the realm of fitness. And I think many of us experience this, right? We work with our folks regardless of the setting. We get them to reach their goals, and then we get to the point where we may, um, may be at a point of discharging from the context of rehabilitation, but man, we still need to pursue the context of fitness with these folks. With many of the, this demographic, it can be somewhat of a gray area, right? When, um, when do they need physical therapy? When do they need fitness? And knowing that they, you cannot accept cash for a medically uh, or, or a Medicare covered service, right? Like physical therapy. And we have this gray line that we operate in where we're kind of tiptoeing back and forth. And, and there's a lot of times where, man, they just need fitness. We need to push them in that direction. There's not a ton of resources, right? We often see that. And so say, we end up saying, hey, let's let's start our own. Let's provide our own opportunity, our own community here. Um, and, and many of the MOA faculty have experienced that. Many of you all have experienced that as well. This is I think a unique opportunity for everyone watching and listening because you are in such a unique position because we all know that the road to fitness, that fitness forward lifestyle, the road to that fitness is going to go through the land of healthcare, right? We're going to have our, our aches, our pains, maybe minor musculoskeletal injuries. We're going to need someone to help navigate that path forward to the, the land of fitness. And oftentimes that does go through the healthcare realm, particularly rehabilitation. In fitness forward rehab clinicians, you are able to live in both worlds. And that's such a unique opportunity um, that, that you want to leverage. And so let's talk about if you're at that point where, man, I really want to provide that fitness opportunity for this particular demographic. You know, what do I think about? How do I go about this? And I'm going to give you some of my thoughts, mainly just, just from experience and learning the hard way, which is the story <laughs> of my life. So the first question that, that I think once you've established that you want to do this is to get a good idea of of kind of where you want to do it. There's two main options that, that we see that a lot of folks will be interested in. One is in the context of an existing fitness facility. Two is in the context of your own clinic or your own space. I'm going to break down kind of the pros and cons of each one and then kind of give you re relevant steps uh, to getting the ball rolling and starting to build this community. Let's start with the gym. I think this is the most common one that we will uh, get questions about with, within the modern management of the older adult division is that, you know, we have folks that are 
home health clinicians, outpatient clinicians. They're serving folks really well in their clinic, but they're also very active in their fit, their fitness community and they want to start an older adult fitness class. Awesome. That is great. Number one, the, the question that we always ask when folks bring this up is, do you go to that gym? Are you a member of a particular fitness community? You will be shocked at how many folks are not a member of a fitness community, but expect to be able to go in and build their own community under the shield and umbrella of an existing business. That's not a good look. All right, we highly recommend that you devote yourself to an existing fitness community. Join that community. Be a person of value. Be a person of service and treat this endeavor that you want to create in a manner that's going to serve that community. All right, there's so many these fitness communities, the, the people that have, have led the charge, that have worked tirelessly to create the culture, to create the, the safe space for folks to pursue their health goals, that involves so much work. It also involves a lot of protection. There are so many folks that work to poach communities and try to get folks' attention and, and basically reap the benefit or the rewards off of someone else's very hard work and dedication over time. And you do not want to be that person. Enter that community with that mind of service and being useful and being helpful. Be an active member. Go to class regularly. Uh, give advice to other folks. See how you can be helpful to that particular community. Then when you approach this conversation of wanting to start a class for older adults, it's going to be much, much better received than if you're just some random PT dropping in saying, hey, I know all the things. I'm going to start this class. Uh, can I do it in your facility? Right. So be a member. That's number one. Number two is framing this conversation for existing gym owners is they have a lot to gain by bringing this demographic in. Hands down, most fitness communities and facilities are not catering to the older adult demographic. If we were to uh, put an age group, age limit on this, let's just say 65 and up for uh, simplicity, even though older adult means so many things, right? But let's say 65 up. This group has the most dispensable income out of any other group of human beings. Yet, what do most fitness facilities focus on? The people that probably have the less <laughs> or the least uh, amount of disposable income, the folks kind of mid 20s, you know, up to early 40s. Right. It doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, and so we, we have a, an opportunity for these folks to cater to this demographic that has the money and is willing to spend the money on these types of things. Another big plus for especially a lot of group based fitness facilities is their schedules. Their schedules are pretty busy in the morning. There's usually a, a lull mid morning. They may have a noon class. It's crickets from 1 p.m. to about 3, 4 p.m. And then they have evening classes. Well, guess when this demographic hates to work out? Early mornings and evenings. And they love to work out mid to late morning and then early afternoons. And so when this gym is empty, AKA they are paying for an empty building, you can fill that with the revenue stream of a really cool, unique demographic. That is a big selling point for a lot of these folks because many of these fitness facilities, the folks that are leveraging and using their facilities during those times of, let's say, you know, 9 to 12, 10 to 12, and then 1P to 3 or 4P, uh, usually are just kind of one-off open gym folks, which they are not making a lot of money off of, if any, uh, in, in that capacity. So you can serve these folks in a tremendous manner. They have a lot to gain. Um, so that's, that's, that's one thing you want to mention. Be a member, frame this up that they have a lot to gain in this context. Now, <clears throat> when you get the green light and you're going to plan and you want to create this group class, what is very important out the gate is you need to define who you're trying to serve. All right. And, and this, we can say 65 plus, right? But if you've ever, you know, worked with this demographic, you know, 65 plus, there are probably 20 sub uh, categories of kind of groups of folks within 65 plus. You have a ton of variability in function and, and mental capacity um, in, in what they're capable of doing in a class. You need to narrow it down and you want to have some filtering questions. All right. I, you could say a screen, if you will, but I recommend asking questions. It's a much more efficient and quicker way. Can you whatever? Can you get to and from the ground independently? Are you using an assistive device, you know, when you're trying to get out and about in the community? Can you walk for 30 minutes straight or be on your feet for 30 minutes straight? Develop some of these questions that's going to filter a certain type of person into your group. And I know you may be thinking, oh my gosh, there's not enough folks 
to meet a particular criteria. Trust me, they're out there. All right? <laughs> they are out there. So define your core individual that you're trying to serve. Well, we like to think about at, at Stronger Life, the fitness facility that Jeff Musgrave and I started, we like to think based on function. So we don't, we don't categorize our classes based on age. We categorize it based on function. What can these folks do? That is going to be very helpful because what you don't want to do is what we did where we said, come one, come all, whoever is over 65, come to our classes at CrossFit Maximus. It's going to be awesome. And then we had all kinds of folks from functional capacity levels to mental capacity levels all over the board. And we needed every bit of two doctors of physical therapy to manage 20 people, uh, which is not a great ratio if you're trying to run a fitness business. So define your audience, all right? So you've defined it, now let's get folks in the door. What I highly recommend you do is to not try and sell fitness. Don't sell fitness. Sell the benefit of fitness. Sell a solution to those individuals' problems. Fitness does not sell in this demographic. It may in a younger demographic that's used to exercise and the expectations that we go to a gym or we go to a class that, that we've kind of grown up or we're just bombarded with this message. But many folks in that older adult demographic will, will simply say 65 and up. That's not necessarily as prevalent. And so it's a harder sell to say, come work out with us. <laughs> you want to sell Hey, do you want to be able to keep up with your grandkid? Hey, you want to reverse that osteoporosis? Hey, let's take care of that arthritis so you can go on that lovely trip to Italy. That's what we're selling to these folks. That's what's going to get in the door. Now, the challenging part is you may not have much of a reputation with these folks or that gym, that existing fitness facility doesn't have much of a reputation. This is where we can leverage resources that the MOA team has already provided you in the form of a workshop, all right? So what, what can be very uh, successful is, let's say you take one of our osteoporosis workshops or our arthritis workshops or our building better balance workshops that we've created in an unbranded uh, slide deck that you can take and present to your community. You can take those and, and market to that particular issue, osteoporosis, for example. So you're gonna get a lot of folks in the door to the want to learn more about osteoporosis. That workshop can lead to a six or four, six, eight week uh, series or challenge of exercise classes that are going to improve whatever it is, osteoporosis or bone mineral density, arthritis balance, whatever it is. You're gonna gain those interested folks and, that will, and you can associate it with that four, six, eight week series. And you're gonna get a lot of very um, interested folks in what you're doing, and they're going to be in a very solid demographic that is going to be a great foundation to build that community from, all right? And I recommend don't make that free, right? Don't make it free. Go ahead and charge for it. You're providing a tremendous value, a tremendous service, all right? You can find those workshops at ptonice.com under the free resources tab. We've ran these workshops in the community to do the exact same thing, and it'll work for you as well. We even have recordings of how to present that material. So think of a series or challenge related around a particular topic. You're going to attract certain type of folks. You filter them with those questions of function. You're going to get a really solid group of people to start this class. All right. Once you start the class, so and this brings me to the next point, is you need to build the bike. All right. If you have spent any time in the spine division uh, courses, you're going to hear them talk about building the bike. What we're really after is demonstrating value and change as quickly as possible. We do this in fitness as well. Usually it's by testing a particular physical outcome measure or maybe a particular workout, a one rep max. How quickly can you row 500 meters? Whatever it may be, test it, retest it. The quicker you can show change, the quicker and better you're going to be able to sell your services to that individual. So you need to build the bike. All right. Last but not least, if you're in a gym, I know this is a lot, but I got a lot, lot to say on this topic. Use the gym's programming. All right. So if you're in a CrossFit facility, uh, let's say they probably have a 9, 930 class, something along those lines. And you're going to have that uh, probably a two hour window before their noon class most of the time. You can fit a couple classes in there. That's how Stronger Life started. I know Christina did something similar with Stave Off uh, up, up in Canada that you have that window. Make it easy on you. All right. Use the gym's programming because what can often happen is, especially if you're in a CrossFit facility, is that CrossFit traditionally is uh, very equipment intensive. It requires a lot of different equipment, a lot of moving parts. 
that let's say you have a high burden, equipment burden class in CrossFit, that you may <laughs> want to be very thoughtful of using that equipment that's already out, for example. Or programming in a manner to where you're not going to have to move and shift a ton of equipment to get ready for that CrossFit class that's going to be starting right at the end of your class. This is something that Stronger Life ran into, um, especially with our crowd, that the equipment retrieval, putting things away, putting things up, took roughly about three to four times longer than what it would take in a traditional CrossFit class. So we looked at the, our class programming and kind of programmed around that and modified the workouts appropriately to fit our crowd, but we used kind of that skeleton early on, which was really, really helpful, and that reduced the amount of decisions that we needed to make. It can clear a lot of mental energy as well, all right? That's a lot. We're, <laughs> we're talking about in the gym, all right? I'm going to talk about the clinic in a second. I'm going to recap this real quick. One, be a member of that gym. Two, they have a lot to gain. Make sure you frame the benefit of bringing this crowd into that facility. Number three, define your core group based on function. Number four, work around a series or a challenge on a topic. Use one of our workshops. Get those folks in the door. That's going to be a great group to start with. When you start, number five, build that bike, show change quickly, and then number six, use a gym's programming. All right? Now, what if you want to do it in the clinic? All right, there's a lot of benefits to this. It's kind of a natural feeder, right? You're already treating patients. You probably already have a good reputation with this community. That's kind of a natural segue into the context of fitness, right? This is the whole model of stave off of what Christina Previtt, Shelby Blankenship are growing here in the States of fitness physical therapy hybrid. There is a lot of benefits to this. Same rules apply, right? In terms of getting things started, of defining your core group, use a series or a challenge, build the bike, make that change relatively quickly. A big thing, two big things that you need to think about if you're going to do this in the clinic. One is you have to be very thoughtful of your equipment and space usage. By and large, most clinics are smaller than gyms. Most clinics have less equipment than gyms in terms of quantity of certain types of things. When you start a class in a gym, an existing fitness facility, especially that does group classes, you've got a lot of margin for error. You've got dozens upon dozens of dumbbells. You have dozens of barbells. You probably have tons of racks if you're gonna use that. You've got lots of rowers and bikes and skis. You've got multiples of so many different pieces of equipment. So you can program all kinds of formats and it's going to likely work. When you are in a clinic, you may have one rower, one bike, one squat rack, one barbell, right? You I'm, And I'm not saying go buy 20 of each to accommodate a cap of 20 for a class. What I'm recommending is that you think more about station-based workouts to have a better usage of that equipment and space, all right? There's a lot that you can learn from moving people through stations. I think you can take that too far and really reduce the quality of that class, but there's a nice little sweet spot where you can provide a station-based uh, class provide high quality coaching and amazing experience and not have a huge equipment and space burden. All right. So be very thoughtful of your equipment and space usage. It is very difficult to take what you would do in a CrossFit class and do it in a clinic at scale with lots of folks in that class. So be very thoughtful of that. And then the big one, creating community. All right. A lot of existing fitness facilities kind of have a lot of things baked in to allow folks to hang around, to mingle, to spend time with one another. Create that in your clinic, right? Make sure your lobby is on point to be able to handle these folks so they can hang out, spend some time together. And when those connections happen, that community tends to grow and grow and grow. If you don't have that space in your clinic, create it outside of the clinic. Have a monthly uh, trip to a brewery or winery or a coffee shop or get folks to do the local 5K together or go to a movie together. Create these events to create those connections and community, that is a huge catalyst to you continuing to grow that community and that class. Awesome. Man, that was a lot. I'm sorry, y'all, but I love this topic. Um, I've been living in this world for the past few years. Uh, Christina has as well um, with Stave Off, and, and a lot of us are interested in this. So if you have any questions or thoughts or you're thinking of getting in this realm, uh, feel free to hit us up. We'd love to talk about this and provide any insight uh, of our our path and <laughs> some of the mistakes we've made and some of the successes we've had as well. All right. Thank you all. Have a lovely Wednesday. MOA Live, Lexington, Kentucky, August 12th, 13th. We'd love to see you all. Other than that, hit me up with any questions. Y'all take care. Thank you for listening to the MMOA podcast. If you found this helpful, please share with someone that could benefit. 
And if you're looking for more practical content to help you better serve older adults, head over to www.mmoa.online where you can learn more about our free resources, our community, continuing education courses, and our certification. Once again, that's www.mmoa.online. Thanks for listening.